In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the algebraic method to solve this tricky dilution calculations question and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Damkwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Now if you need a more thorough tutorial on dilution calculations or you just want to see several solved examples on dilution calculations then I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description and I'm going to link it in the cards as well. But let's get right to the question. The question says a 3 year old child has been prescribed carbocysteine 62.5 milligrams 4 times a day as part of a 4 week trial to help manage his asthma symptoms. His doctor would like this to be a 5 milliliter dose for ease of administration. What quantity of diluent would you require to make up the 4 week supply given that you have 250 milligrams per 5 milliliter solution in stock? So let's reflect on the question for a minute. The goal here actually is to find a way to ensure that each time this three-year-old patient takes the carbocysteine, they're going to get 62.5 milligrams of carbocysteine in each teaspoonful, each 5 ml dose. And so that's the whole rationale. And you have as your starting stock solution, 250 milligrams per 5 ml or per teaspoonful, which essentially is 50 milligrams per milliliter if you kind of simplify the ratio right there. But for our purposes, the goal is to determine how much of the diluent, you know, what volume of diluent that will be needed in order to be able to change this concentration from the 250 milligrams per 5 ml to 62.5 milligrams per 5 ml. And so the strategy we want to use here is the algebraic method. And because you are mixing two things, your starting stock solution and the diluent, then you have a two component system and so your equation would be C1Q1 plus C2Q2 equals C final Q final. Here the C1 is the concentration of the first component, Q1 is the quantity of the first component, C2 is the concentration of the second component and Q2 is the quantity of the second component. Now CF is the concentration of your final product and QF is the quantity of your final product. So for the purposes of this calculation, let's go ahead and do a quick assignment. We will call the carbocysteine stock solution as our component one and then we will assign the diluent to be our component two. And so more specifically, the concentration of the stock solution is 250 milligrams per 5 milliliters and the quantity actually is not given so we do not know that we can just leave that as Q1. Then subsequently the concentration of the second component which is the diluent so the diluent will not have any amount of the carbocysteine and so the concentration there will be zero and then the quantity which is Q2 is also not known so we just leave that as Q2. Then you have the concentration of the final product and here the goal is to have 62.5 milligrams in every 5 milliliter dose. So the concentration would be 62.5 milligrams per 5 milliliter. Then the final quantity is also not known but it's also given as Q1 plus Q2. So because you're mixing just two components together, when you sum up those quantities, you should end up with the final quantity. So that's why you have QF equals Q1 plus Q2. So now we can go ahead and substitute this information into the equation. And so for C1, we have 250 milligrams and 5 milliliters times Q1 plus C2, which is 0 times Q2. And that should be equal to CF, which is 62.5 milligrams in 5 milliliters times QF. Now you will notice that you have one equation with three unknowns. And even though zero times any number is zero, so zero times the Q2 will give us zero, you will still end up with one equation with two unknowns, which is the Q1 and the QF. So there's a smart way around this. And that's what I want to show you in the next step. 
and that is to make use of the real understanding of where this algebraic equation is coming from the algebraic equation is coming from the law of conservation of mass so anytime you multiply concentration and quantity you get the mass quantity and so we're going to make use of that understanding and what we are going to do is instead of using the 62.5 milligrams divided by 5 ml times qf we would simply go ahead and determine what the quantity is going to be for the carbocysteine for this particular preparation once you've diluted it to get the final concentration because we have enough information in there to allow us to do that so what that will actually look like is we'll make use of the dose so we have 62.5 milligrams per dose and there are four doses in one day so times four doses per day now you have seven days in one week and the reason we are doing this is because the entire treatment duration is for four weeks so times four weeks so since this is dimension analysis we can cancel out the units the day will cancel days and the week cancel weeks and you can multiply all the numbers in the numerator and divide by what's in the denominator and so what that would look like is you have 62.5 milligrams times 4 times 7 times 4 all of this divided by essentially 1 and that gives 7000 milligrams so 7000 milligrams is the actual amount of carbocysteine that is needed for the four week supply so this number is significant because wherever we see cf times qf we can simply substitute that product with the 7000 milligram value so let's go ahead and do that into this equation right here and so now what we'll have is 250 milligram divided by 5 milliliters times q1 plus 0 times q2 and now that's going to be equal to 7000 milligrams so let's go ahead and simplify the equation by getting rid of the q2 because 0 times any number is going to be 0 so 0 times q2 is going to go to 0 and that leaves us with one variable and one equation which can easily solve for so what that would then look like is you have 250 milligrams divided by 5 milliliters times q1 being equal to 7000 milligrams then we can go ahead and solve for q1 so q1 is going to be equal to 5 milliliters times 7000 milligrams divided by 250 milligrams and that's going to be equal to 140 milliliters now just as a reminder what we are actually looking for is q2 because that's the quantity of the diluent so to find that we need to know what the final quantity is and we can easily determine that because cf times qf this is the right hand side is actually equal to the 7000 so we already know what cf is and so we can easily solve for the final quantity so what that would then look like is you will have 62.5 milligrams per 5 milliliters times qf being equal to 7000 milligrams you can solve for qf qf is going to be equal to 5 milliliters times 7000 milligrams all of that divided by 62.5 milligrams and that's going to be equal to 560 milliliters but notice that qf is equal to q1 plus q2 and so we can go ahead and make q2 the subject of the equation so q2 is going to be equal to qf minus q1 and that's going to be equal to 560 milliliters which is qf minus q1 which is 140 milliliters and that's going to be equal to 420 milliliters now if you'd like to see more solved problems on dilution calculations then i'm going to put a link in the playlist so be sure to check it out so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i see them if you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations tips tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video